Welcome, welcome to another vlog. Okay, let me first start by start you know start off by saying that uh, um, the last vlog was it was an extremely emotional vlog for me, as you could tell. Um, I didn't really intend to get that angry, but when I thought about what's going on with our country, I thought about the apathy. I think about the blind faith of those who claim that they're informed for one party or another, um, I get angry because I don't take this lightly. I don't take politics and the world we live in and, and our essential um, progression as human beings uh, lightly. I think we all are, you know, living this experience um, you know, obviously once, and we have a choice to make. Do we sit by and blindly just ignore it? Do we cheer along those who continue to, you know, screw us over? Do we step up and, and rise up and, and resist and revolt and progress as human beings? These are the questions we have to ask ourselves. And as somebody who's informed, who has awakened and awoken to the idea that what we have right now as far as our, you know, modern America, the modern world in 2012, is definitely not what I was envisioning as a kid, nor when I was in high school, nor when I was in my early 20s. Um, things have gotten out of control. And to see so many people blindly accept um, the uh, you know, the uh, the conveyor be belt you know to the slaughterhouse I don't understand it and I get upset so that's my explanation I really don't want to have to go into what I said if you haven't watched it go ahead and watch my last vlog but no I'm here actually to talk a little bit about um, the only person I could say that I've ever had really any faith or in politics, um, anybody, it, basically the only politician who has motivated me to actually really look in the system, um, to work inside the system, to, to at least try to attempt to work inside the system, and that's Representative Ron Paul, um, obviously ran for president this year in 2008. In 88, he was a libertarian uh, candidate for president. Um, but he stood up for his, He's pretty much had the same consistent pro-liberty, pro-constitution, anti-drug war, anti-war, um, you know, um, pro-civil liberty, um, pro-freedom um, agenda for as long as he's been, you know, in political office. Um, with the end of this congressional session, um, Dr. Paul, um, will be retiring. And he's honestly one of the last real, um, statesmen left in, in, in Washington, in my opinion. Um, and I don't look at Rand Paul. Rand Paul, you know, there's so many Ron Paul supporters who blindly support Rand Paul just because he's a kid, he's his kid and I'm looking at this guy and he's, you know, we really going to support a guy who wanted to have an independent journalist arrested for asking him questions? Um, do we really want a guy who's going to compromise his ideals and principles of what he says he stands for um, to align himself with mainline GOP? Um, as some people also did in the Ron Paul campaign. Um, and yeah, I don't necessarily agree with how this election and the way that Ron Paul, Ron Paul ran his campaign, I, I really didn't. Uh, I didn't like the way it ended. I li would have liked to see some 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 uh, money be spent uh, in California um, to help sway you know those independents who were not really happy with Barack Obama and those who obviously don't want to support Mitt Romney. So he's he he gave a farewell address, farewell speech. There's plenty of, of them out there, copies on YouTube. 
Um, it's about 49 minutes long, almost 50 minutes long. Um, and it's a very riveting, very true, historical, very succinct and to the point speech um, about the dangers of where we're heading in our country. Um, and I mean, he goes down the line of everything from our civil liberties to the idea of the Federal Reserve System, printing money, um, and kind of admitting, yeah, you know, on the surface, if you look at how many bills were passed with my name on it, and what has been passed in Congress, you could say, on the surface, yeah, I didn't, I didn't change anything. But if you, he, he really admits that, you know, he's, he's, he's there to instill the 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 vision you know the the vision of the founding fathers the original intent of the constitution um, real you know liberty limited government and he has not caved in to the corporatist slave state the slave masters who occupy Washington by way of the proxy political you know puppets that occupy Washington today he has been one of the sole people who have stood up ringing the bell against the economic collapse of this country. He was ringing it back in the 80s. Um, So Ron Paul gave his farewell speech the other day. And I think what's really telling, I'm going to actually put, and I have it back here, pause to a certain section. This section is really, it's about, it's like the last five minutes or so of the the speech, and I'm going to play this for you, in which... He says something very telling, says what I've been saying all along, and that's that we need a social revolution before we have a political one. Society is so dumbed down, arrogant, um, me, 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 we really don't care about each other unless there's a crisis, Um, and the morals are just gone from our from from society. People have been engineered, socially engineered to be dumbed down to be dehumanized. And he essentially says that the the answer is uh, isn't government. So let me go ahead and and play this for you. Here we go, it's Ron Paul and uh, listen to what he says here. Because it's very, very telling. What I'm talking about is a system of government guided by the moral principles of peace and tolerance. The founders were convinced that a free society could not exist without a moral people. Just writing rules won't work if the people choose to ignore them. Today, the rule of law written in the Constitution has little meaning for most Americans, especially those who work in Washington, D.C. Benjamin Franklin claimed, quote, only a virtuous people are capable of freedom. John Adams concurred, quote, our Constitution was made for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate for the government of any other. A moral people must reject all violence in an effort to mold people's beliefs or habits. A society that boos or ridicules the golden rule is not a moral society. All great religions endorse the golden rule. The same moral standards that individuals are required to follow should apply to all government officials. They cannot be exempt. The ultimate solution is not in the hands of the government. Solution falls on each and every individual with guidance from family, friends, and community. The number one responsibility for each of us is to change ourselves with hope that others will follow. This is of greater importance than the working on changing the government. That is secondary to promoting a virtuous society. If we can achieve this, then the government will change. It doesn't mean that political action or holding office has no value. At times, it does nudge policy in the right direction. But what is true is that when seeking office is done for personal aggrandizement, money, or power, it becomes useless if not harmful. When political action is taken for the right reasons, it's easy to understand why compromise should be avoided. It's also become clear why progress is best achieved by working with coalitions which bring people together without anyone sacrificing his principles. Political action, to be truly beneficial, must be directed toward changing the hearts and minds of the people, recognizing that it's virtue and morality of the people that allow liberty to flourish. The Constitution or more laws per se have no value if the people's attitudes aren't changed. 
To achieve liberty and peace, two powerful human emotions have to be overcome. Number one is envy, which leads to hate and class warfare. Number two is intolerance, which leads to bigoted and judgmental policies. These emotions must be replaced with a much better understanding of love, compassion, tolerance, and free market economics. Freedom, when understood, brings people together. When tried, freedom is popular. The problem we have faced over the years has been that economic interventionists are swayed by envy, whereas social interventionists are swayed by intolerance or of habits and lifestyles. The misunderstanding that tolerance is an endorsement of certain activity motivates many to legislate moral standards which should not only be set by individuals making their own choices. Both sides use force to deal with these misplaced emotions. Both are authoritarians. Neither endorses voluntarism. Both views ought to be rejected. I have come to one firm conviction after these many years of trying to figure out the plain truth of things. The best chance for achieving peace and prosperity for the maximum number of people worldwide is to pursue, pursue the cause of liberty. If you find this to be a worthwhile message, spread it throughout the land. And I yield back the balance of my time. It's back. So, there you have Dr. Paul giving his, his the last like five minutes or so of his farewell speech. Um, but there he, he says it. He says that, that a moral people who bull, boo the golden rule. Now, actually, I'm going to go ahead and get back to this real quick because I want to put... Oh, no, no, I'm going to run this through, but let's see. Uh, you might or may or may not remember, but uh, Ron Paul was um, was booed for stating that our, our, our government should follow the golden rule. Um, at a debate, and here it is. Let's let's listen to this. This is what he's talking about. Andrew Jackson had a pretty clear-cut idea about America's enemies. Kill them. Congressman Paul, 30 seconds, please. 30 seconds to respond, since you were mentioned. My, my, my point is, is if another country does to us what we do others, we're not going to like it very much. So I would say that maybe we ought to consider a golden rule in, uh, in foreign policy. Don't do to other nations what we don't want to have them do to us. So we, we endlessly bomb, we endlessly bomb these countries and then we wonder, wonder why they get upset <coughs> with us. And, uh, and, and yet it's, it continues on and on. I mean, uh, and he's being told to go home. See, you're not going to change things, and this is where I get angry, you're not going to change things with people who approve of bombing other countries. Uh, you're not going to change things, you're not going to change society with people like that. Nor do you going to change society if we're going to have people who are going to think that government's role is to take care of people. Ron Paul has it right, and... As much as I don't like politics or politicians and think that they're pretty much useless in the bottom line of things, at least what I've seen in the 31 years of my life, um, Ron Paul, thank you for your, your service to this country as far as um, your political you know, um, movement. And you've awakened a lot of people and opened the eyes, which could hopefully lead to some real change in the future. Thanks again. Vlog number something out late.